PlayStation experience has come and gone, so I know I'm a little bit late on this video, but I did want to tell you guys about some of the games that I played there aside from Destiny. I played a bunch of stuff, but the two games in this video really stood out to me. The first is Pyre by Supergiant Games. It's set to release sometime in 2017 for PS4 and PC. If that studio sounds familiar, they're the ones behind Bastion and Transistor, two absolutely gorgeous games. I mean that in every sense of the word. The visual styles of both are very striking. The music in both is haunting, and it sticks with you for years after a playthrough. And then the gameplay itself is always challenging, fun, and rewarding. The last point is something I really respect Supergiant for. Their games will hold your hand a very small amount, but eventually it leaves you to figure out your own way through the game. The base difficulty on both games has always been perfectly tuned, and then they have options to increase the difficulty as you go on. I'm rambling a little bit, so back to Pyre. I only played the 1v1 versus mode, since I usually enjoy the stories that Supergiant puts into their games, and I didn't want to spoil anything. Fortunately, the versus mode is the exact core gameplay in the story missions. I do know that you're traveling with a group of three known as the Nightwings. All of you have been exiled from somewhere, and if you progress through a series of challenges, you can possibly return to wherever it is that you came from and escape purgatory. You take control of the Nightwings in these trials, which is where the core gameplay is seen. The arena where everything takes place offers extremely fast gameplay once you get used to it. You have three characters that you can control, a larger and slower one who has a wide, devastating attack, a medium-sized humanoid with balanced movement speed and attack distance, and finally a smaller but faster character with a narrow but longer range attack. The object of the game is to get the ball that spawns in the center of the arena to the other team's goal. You do this by controlling one character at a time. You can pass the ball from character to character while trying to destroy the other team's players with attacks. Whichever character you cap with will give you more or less points. The slower character grants more points, and the faster character one grants less. Whichever character you score with cannot be used the next round, so the other team will be up one character, which creates some pretty interesting dynamics with how you go forward in the game. This sounds like it would be a slower paced game since you have to control one character at a time, but swapping between the characters is near instantaneous, which opens the game up for some incredibly rapid play. Bleshus and I were able to grasp the core concepts of the game rather quickly, and by the end of the game we were doing some pretty cool plays. The footage you see here was given to me by Supergiant, so I can only assume it's some of the developers playing, which is why they're doing really well. Supergiant has a weird way of making games in genres I normally don't really enjoy. Both Bastion and Transistor took place in top-down isometric view, which is usually just a complete no, I'm not going to buy it turn-off for me. Pyre has this modified turn-based thing going for it, which, again, I normally wouldn't even pay attention to. It just doesn't interest me. But damn... After playing this for a bit of PlayStation experience, I'm really, really looking forward to it. The other game I've been following for some time now is Death's Gambit, made by a small independent group called White Rabbit and published by Adult Swim. There's no release date at the current time, but it's going to release on PS4 and PC whenever it finally does. I originally saw this game back at the 2015 PlayStation Experience. Pixel art games generally get passed over by me just because there's so many of them out there, but something about this game just really immediately grabbed my attention. It was probably the whole climbing giant boss fights, Dark Souls and Castlevania had a baby that was raised by Shadows of the Colossus, take my money, take it now. Yeah, so the demo they had in 2015 definitely still felt like a work in progress, with some of the controls being a little bit sluggish, and some performance issues as well. When I played the demo again this year, after they've had a whole lot of time to develop it, all of those issues were gone. Completely. Everything felt crisp and really responsive, with no other issues aside from me dying all the time because the game doesn't hold your hand in any way. Again, this is something I really respect from developers. Tutorials aren't popping up every second. There wasn't a mini-map with waypoints dictating where you go, a quest log popping up, none of that. Just you, your weapons, and the ever-looming need to press forward despite everything in your path wanting you dead. The general gameplay is very much a 2D Dark Souls. You have two weapon slots to equip whatever you want. Some item slots, a heal, a special move ability that requires specific weapons, and then you gain resources from killing things which you can use to upgrade your stats at shrines. Sounds very much like Dark Souls. The boss fights vary from smaller fights against larger beasts to literally climbing giants with grappling hooks and riding gargantuan birds through the air. Everything was challenging as well, and I mean everything. 
Imtash plays quite a bit of Dark Souls, and he's way better at those games than me. So he was feeling really confident when I was telling him about this game, and he gave this wonderful statement before playing. Hey, what did you say again? I'm gonna beat it first try, baby! Hey, he's gonna <laughs> beat it first try. Needless to say, he did not get it first try. Hopefully these games piqued your interest a bit as well. Whenever they finally come out, I will definitely be giving them some solid time on my stream. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.